The 2023 Holinka Gretzky Cup starts this week in Slovakia and Czechia with pre-tournament action beginning on Thursday the 27th. Canada, of course, will be looking to fend their gold medal with a roster featuring a near all OHL blue line. But let's start with the forwards. So Team Canada will obviously be looking to Michael Misa for offense. He was excellent for Canada Red at the U-17s, playing, playing on a line with Porter Martone and Berkeley Catton. And what can you say about his development since then? I, I don't think it's any surprise that uh, Michael has developed really nicely. I mean, he's a good player. He's only going to get better with physical maturity and the understanding of what the challenges are. Uh, I, I personally like him in the middle of the ice. I, I, I hope they put him in the middle of the ice. I mean, obviously, when you have the success that him and Cat and Martone had, you know, there's there, there tends to be, you know, that comfort level of just saying, well, let's just put them back together. And when you play for Team Canada, you're going to have to play out of position a little bit. But I would also go back just a little bit further and suggest that, you know, Michael Misa and Malcolm Spence had a lot of success with the Mississauga Senators en route to an OHL Cup championship. So, uh, you know, good players find a way to be successful with other good players. And I think that, this, uh, you, you know, with with reflecting back on Catton and Martone and Misa's success at the U-17, uh, you can even go back further and understand that Malcolm and Michael had a lot of success in that uh, championship season. And certainly... Again, I think it's a dynamic player on a dynamic team. And you certainly, when you look at the the abilities that uh, are fused together with this Team Canada, uh, it's really impressive. And, and there's every reason to believe that they're going to be right there uh, at, at, the top of the, at the top of the group competing for the gold medal. So I want to ask a bit about Mesa's situation in Saginaw this year. Obviously, Saginaw is hosting the Memorial Cup. So the chance to be guaranteed a place in that tournament in your second year of junior hockey, what will that mean to Michael? And how do you think it'll motivate him? You know, there's a couple of things. You know, and I think, and, and I, I want to be really quick on this story. So I'll try to be as fast as I can be. In 2009, prior to the 2010 Olympics, Steve Eisenman was the general manager. I asked Steve Eisenman, you know, how important was it to have Stanley Cup, you know, winning experience and, you know, when you're looking at players? He said, well, it would be nice if every player had Stanley Cup winning experience, but they all don't. He said, what I'm looking for is players that have had winning experience. And he, he went back and he told me when he won the Stanley Cup for the first time in 1997, he said it was wonderful. It's the NHL. It's what you dream of and everything. He goes, he goes, when I look back on it, he goes, I felt very similar to when I won the Pee Wee Championship, the U-12 Championship, you know, in, in, in Ottawa. And so I, I go back in time and I think about Michael. When we go back to Michael, and then I'm, I'm going to bring Malcolm into this too, that, that Mississauga Senators team had to qualify for the OHL Cup. They were a top team, ran into a little bit of a stumble through the through the playoffs, and then had to qualify all the, I mean, we knew they were a good team. I mean, it was no surprise that they were going to qualify. But, you know, they hit a little stumble, a little bump on the road, and they found their way through it all the way to the championship. So now Michael, exceptional status, comes into the OHL, performs very well, goes to the U-17. You know, Saginaw, you know, they, they made some moves down the stretch, trading Minchikoff, and then saying, hey, we got a good group here. They get the Memorial Cup. This is just going to, everything is going to lead in to helping Michael become more confident in these situations and, and we know how skilled he is but he's going to be able to draw on these experiences the ohl cup the u17 the Helenka, where everybody guns for canada you know this is an opportunity for canada to put their best players together as one team in this age group they don't get that opportunity in april at the u18 championships but they do here and Everybody knows playing against Canada, this is their best. And, you know, so th that puts the demands and the expectations uh, a little bit greater and a little bit higher for Team Canada. But players that have been through it and understand the challenges of, of competing and winning and everybody pushing at them, Michael will, will benefit. And, and Saginaw, this isn't just a host team, Saginaw. They're going to be a really good team. I mean, they're going to go through the course of the regular season and very well. I mean, to me, I see them as a, a as the last four teams standing in the OHL come next uh, come next OHL playoffs. When you start to grind through that type of uh, a process, knowing that you're also going to get a chance uh, to compete at the Memorial Cup, the benefits are are so numerous. And certainly, what we've seen with Michael over over the course of his uh, you know. Uh, 
pre OHL career, and now his OHL career, he, he learns and he grows. And there's no question that he's going to grow from this, and it's only going to help him not just into the into the OHL regular season playoffs and Memorial Cup, but certainly past that. And next season, as he enters his draft year. So you mentioned Malcolm Spence there a couple times. I want to touch on him. So he had 42 points in 64 games, which is statistically the best rookie season the year. He since McDavid a decade ago, but he only played two games at the U-17s. You mentioned this will be a best-on-best best tournament at this age group. What are you looking for in his game, you know, in the in the first time he's kind of where the Canadian flag uh, at a best-on-best best tournament and, and will play the whole time? When I look at Malcolm, and I, I I still remember clear as day the first time I saw him play. I saw him at the Silver Stick, and it was like, wow. At that age, I looked at him and I said, he's already an elite NHL skater. Already, like that was at 15 years of age. When you have that type of dynamic skating ability, where you where you can back up defenders and you can open up ice for yourself. And trust me, when, when I watch Malcolm play, I see somebody that puts fear in defenders' eyes because he he puts you right back on your heels and backs you right off quickly, and he's hungry to score. He's a, he's a, he's a really good goal scorer. He attacks the net. He attacks defenders. And when you watch somebody at that age, you know, who's still raw in so many different ways with respect to his skill, and you, you, to me, he just screams. He screams long-time NHL that's going to be a real – a, a real significant factor come uh, come his career in the NHL. And, you know, it, it's interesting, Kyle, when I look back at it, it if Michael Misa doesn't end up as the, uh, as the uh, getting exceptional status, then Malcolm Spence goes to Saginaw, and then Michael comes back and plays, and then it's very likely that Michael's the first overall pick this year to Erie. <laughs> so here they are, kind of, you know, these these one-two guys, right, that are teammates, right? And, you know, to me, when I look at the skill level of them both, you know, in, in, in a different in a different uh, world, you know, they, they could have been playing on uh, on each other's respective teams, you know, just if it would have fallen a different way, you know. But I, I think Malcolm is a, is, is a terrific player. You know, as Dave Brown built his team in Erie, I mean, he's been through this before as an assistant with, you know, when Connor, when Connor, when Dave was playing, Connor Brown, you know, Dylan Strong, that group of players. So he knows how to build a team. And, you know, there's going to be a lot more skill uh, around Malcolm this year in Erie. And, you know, Erie's going to going to make some really good strides forward uh, as, as a team. And Malcolm's going to be, a, I think, a real significant part of that. So before we move on to the defense core in the 2024 NHL draft class, I just want to touch on the goaltending situation. So Ryerson Leaners and Carter George will both be, both be representing Canada. Um, you know, Ryerson played 35 games uh, as a 16 year old in Mississauga and Carter George was obviously a unique situation because he only played 10 games, but 924 save percentage, 7-3 and 0 record during that time. He was sparkling in Owen Sound. So how do you think Canada lines up in net? Well, I mean, they're going to line up very nicely. You know, it's always interesting to me when when I hear different comments about Canada goaltending, and you know, oh boy, is, is there a problem again? You know, like there's going to be different periods of time when you know players move, you know, in a direction. You know, we get better forwards and maybe some better defensemen and some goaltenders. But you know, Gabriel Daig, you, you know, the goaltender from Victoriaville, and and then the two goaltenders. Uh, for uh, the other two goaltenders from the Ontario League, you know, Leanders and Jort, th these are really good goaltenders. They're, they're not just, okay, they're the best of what's out there. They're really good goaltenders. You know, Gabriel played for Team Canada at the U18 tournament in, in Switzerland, and, and certainly he's got some of that international experience. But when James Richmond is putting a young goaltender into the net <laughs> that many times, it's not because he's going, I'll just give him a chance. It's because he's earned that opportunity and he's capable. And, you know, all in sound, you, you know, the, they always have good teams. And certainly, you know, they're going to be counting on George this year to come in there and, and, and play really well. To me, when you have three really good goaltenders, that that is a, I, I'm not going to say it's a luxury, but it's certainly something that where they can push one another. And you don't have to put players into positions where they might not be quite ready. I think all those three goaltenders are, are more than ready and capable uh, of taking the reins and, and being uh, the lead guy. And 
you know, one of the things with Hockey Canada, this tournament serves as a as that opportunity. You know, just because Gabriel Day played in the U18 doesn't mean that he he's not going to uh, you know be challenged and he's not going to feel that pressure to perform because you know if you're Alan Latang, you know that you have three goaltenders that can get in there and do the job. And you know sometimes you're going to have to be ready uh, to make that change, wh whether it be because of an injury. Dag is a perfect example. Carson Bjarnason got hurt, and he had to step right in there. And you know, you're coming in there; the the, the level of play is higher. And and you, you know, he certainly had a little bit of, of of that of those moments. Okay, it's a little bit faster, but then you watch him adjust. Canada ends up winning a, a bronze medal, and 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 I would suggest a very rewarding bronze medal. You know, from some of the things they went through, Callum Ritchie, you know, getting hurt with his shoulder, Carson Bjarnason leaving. They found a way. They found a way to. Uh, uh, to to come through in, in a medal opportunity and, and deliver. And, and I think it's the same thing here uh, with those two goaltenders.